All right, you should be seeing our agendas. Everybody seeing our agendas? Yep. Yes. All right, so I'll officially start. Uh, and um, first of all, I'm going to thank everybody for the OKD marathon working group thing. Um, we, on the day of, I haven't looked to see the long tail stuff, and I'm still working on getting all the videos edited and uploaded. Um, I think I've gotten three, one of which is a combo, the first one that had um, AWS and Charo's Eclipse Che in it that just got up last night. And But on the day of, we had over 10,000 views uh, of the content, um, mostly coming from um, YouTube and Facebook, which is really always strange to me. But there is obviously an active OpenShift user group on Facebook and um, all over ACPAC and other places, so that's quite interesting. So that, I think, was really pretty awesome. So I wanted to thank everybody who did that and apologize as always, for being late and tardy in getting the videos up. Um, day jobs get in the way, uh, but we will get them. I'm working on the Dusty's one right now um, in the background, rendering it and then uploading it. So that was great. And tomorrow, if you don't know, we have a CNCF um, uh, session going on um, that we I submitted and they accepted. It was in its call. It's tomorrow at 7 a.m. Pacific, which is 10 a.m. Eastern, and it's called um, CNCF has 99 Kubernetes distros, and this is why we built one more. Um, and it's OKD and Fedora CoreOS folks. Um, uh, Dusty's going to do the Fedora CoreOS side, and uh, Charo and Christian and Vadim, I think, is also, you're going to get to do the demo. So um, I saw the slides from that. I did a few tweaks on it um, that you shared with me this morning. I'm not sure Dusty has inserted his content yet to the slide deck. Um, Vadim, are we still waiting for him? Oh, I think Dusty's done it, and I'm still working on mine, actually. Okay. So Did you, I... guys, did you guys share the right one with Diane? Because I, I think the I think the link that you had sent earlier to Diane Vadim was this is the one I was tweaking so maybe I've got the wrong one CNCF yeah. OKD four yeah that's the wrong one all right well I'll stop tweaking it then and you can send me the right one um, and and we'll that, that explains a few things because I got to the CoreOS section and I was like hmm There's pretty nothing. empty pretty empty right there so. Cool. All right. Well, I will await for that and, um, and and hopefully get some time this afternoon. I am going to the dentist in an hour to get a crown put in, so I will be grumpy this afternoon and not really polite, probably, in my constructive criticism when the Novocaine wears off. So um, so that's, um, that's good news. Once you have that slide deck done, the other good news, um, at least to me, maybe not to everybody else, um, we did have a talk on the same topic, um, accepted to DevConf US, um, in which I submitted uh, myself, Christian, and um, Antonio, I'm going to kill his last name, Madochi. Um, Murdaka. Thank you. Um, two points for you. Um, I kill everybody's name, so I apologize in advance, and it doesn't matter whether it's, you know, North American, European, ACPAC. Latham, I just kill everybody's names. I've never really been great at it, uh, which is hilarious for someone in my role. Uh, probably not. But um, so we have to record that again. So we'll do one for CNCF, which should get a lot of lift and awareness um, from the CNCF folks. Um, and then DevConf, I think they have a deadline of recording and uploading in the next two weeks as well. So. Um, practice and then we'll pr pull Antonio in and make him play the, the part of uh, Dusty um, and do it again. And we can do that at our own pace. Um, we just have to set up a blue jeans and record it and then I can edit it and upload it um, for the DevConf folks. So if those of you who don't know, um, DevConf US, US 2020 is here and it is a really fun place to hang out 
for a couple of days virtually if you haven't been um, if you if you haven't been to one before the one in um, the Czech Republic is one of my favorite conferences of all times um, and it's not just because the beer is really good and really cheap um, it's a lot of fun so hopefully we can make the US version of it um, just as lively and fun as the Czech one has been for many years so um, that's sort of what we have on the um, marketing publicity side of things um, I know um, Charo you have been in onboarding sessions for the past couple of weeks I think you've come up for air now yes okay. I have okay so maybe next week um, we could take a look at um, do adding um, the cookbook and recipes to um, at some point just set up a one-on-one -on -one with you and I can show you how to how to update the OKD website and we can figure out um, what course what sort of recipes and how to incorporate um, also the videos that we've by then I should be done with them all um, onto the site and get that up there all right motoring on um, and thank you for your patience with my process today um, OKD4 update. Vadim and Christian, you're here. Where are we at? What's what's the latest? Yeah, I can give an update. Um, most of this part of this two weeks, we've been fixing Fortit 6 nightlies. Uh, because in Fortit 6, OVS is now running on host, which means um, upgrades would become much smoother. Uh, but we had to do quite a few tricks in OKD to catch up with what Arcos does. Uh, one of the problems we've hit is that Network Manager needed, in Fedora, needed a few fixes. So we requested those, waiting for those to land, and things should get back. Um, another 4 to 6 feature would be Samples Operator is finally using uh, the community, meaning uh, Pentos, UBI7, and UBI8 image streams. So that would be different from Arcos, and we would be able to contribute more. Uh, so while that's in the works, we're still testing quite a few things, see how that ends up. And uh, the biggest problem last week has been uh, that I was signing. The CI part has been broken for quite some time. We gauged this and fixed it uh, just recently. So uh, this week we would be able to uh, create a new stable release. So we didn't do that last week because uh, we would hit the very same problems. Also, amount of changes in the latest stable hasn't been, that uh, hasn't been anything critical. So we decided to slow that down. Which leads me to the question for the community. Um, that's a pretty extraordinary situation, which means we should somehow track it. The question is, should it be a, um, a calendar, for instance, or a GitHub issue, or uh, how folks should get notified about the stable issues and stable problems? Um, that's pretty much all I have to say. Let's go. Yeah, and from my side, um, not a huge uh, amount of news, but um, making some progress on the operator enhancement. I've actually joined a team now, the uh, Windows machine config operator team, um, where I'll be working for one quarter. And with them, I will pioneer uh, kind of the way how we release operators to OKD. So we want to make OKD kind of our first target um, for the alpha version and um, make use of the different streams we have on Operator Hub. There's a few things, which is why the enhancement isn't up yet, um, uh, with regards to releasing operators. Uh, we want to have a clear story that all the teams can follow. And um, the Operator Hub still uses the app registry for um, releasing and publishing operators, while uh, Red Hat Core OS has already migrated to the new way of doing it, where you kind of have a a container that references all the images um, for each version, which is a bit more self-contained. And once, um, so I'm I'm not sure how easy it'll be to 
get all the Red Hat operators onto Operator Hub um, with them already releasing the new way. Um, so I'll, I'll, yeah, what I was going to do is reach out to the Operator Hub team and find out their timeline uh, on on that migration on on that side. And then, yeah, once we have kind of all the all the uh, things we have to do uh, listed up uh, nicely, there will be an, an enhancement that all the teams then can follow to publish their operators, their, their yeah, non-core operators to Operator Hub. Um, so yeah, not a lot of visibility there right now, but it's definitely there's definitely some progress. So can we go back um, to the last thing that Vadim said? He was you were asking for um, community input on how people wanted to be notified about an issue. Can you clarify um, what you're asking there, Vadim? Do you need people? Yeah, to um, we have committed to releasing the stable snapshots every two weeks. Uh, but due to some issues, we might want to delay that. The question is how the community should get notified and uh, how it should be tracked. I'm thinking we could reuse the very same calendar we use for the meetings and uh, file probably a GitHub issue. Um, if folks have any other suggestions, um, shout it out. So um, let me see if I, if I heard that correctly. So would we be using the Fedora project calendar to announce um, releases or delays and also logging an issue? So maybe combining the two, is that, that the suggestion? Or are you talking about having a, another community page like this one that's in front of us now? Yeah, I'm thinking calendar event and the GitHub issue probably that would be a best combination. A dedicated mailing list suggested, um, not sure how I feel about that. I don't feel like mailing. I'm not sure we need a dedicated list for it, but um, I think have, sending it out on our uh, Google group list um, would make sense, yeah. just to notify everybody who subscribed to that. Yeah, I, I think at, le at the very least, sending a note there. Um, maybe what what I would suggest is that you you do one. Let's do one announcement using the calendar and logging an issue, and then um, we see how how people and do it to the mailing list um, to the the Google group, which is basically a mailing list, um, and see if that works. In okay, that sounds that sounds good. I think we cover all the cases mentioned. Yeah. So yeah, whatever. So I you know there are other people have. Other ways they want to get notified. I mean, really, that's our channel to reach people, and I hesitate to create any new channels or new mailing lists. I got enough of them. I'm sure you all do too. Um, we could. The, the only other thing I could say is in in the um, in the Kubernetes Slack channel um, on the topic. If there is an urgent something or other, you might be able to set the topic. Um, but I, even that seems like it's um, overlapping with too many other conversations that are going on with other flavors of OpenShift. So I think that's what we have is the calendar, the Google group, and um, issues. So those are the three. Are you, are you talking about opening a GitHub issue in OKD or in community? I'm thinking OKD would be best. Okay. Yeah. I don't think too many people follow the community no. <laughs> page other than, than me um, to drive this meeting. Um, so it's probably the safe place. So let's, let's try it once and see if that works. And um, if someone pipes up and says it didn't, there's a bunch of you on the call right now. If anybody has an opinion about that, um, let me know. All right. Um, so uh, I was just going to open this wish list again, the new tab. Um, did any of these get migrated over, any of these on the wish list in the past um, little while? Vadim, or uh, you said you were working on the win with the Windows containers, folks. Right, we are working. Yeah, I don't on... think. 
we're working on a generic strategy how to release all of these operators and community involve folks into the testing and try to avoid overloading the Red Hat because they don't like additional work. Nobody does. Nobody. Um, <laughs> so um, wish list is useful, but we need a generic strategy how to approach it. Okay. And so most of these items uh, would be fixed once once we have a proper way of releasing it. Mm -hmm. Got that. Um, so the other thing on the agenda, if we can move on, um, where where are we at in terms of outreach to the Fedora Container SIG folks? I think, um, Christian, if I recall correctly, you were going to do some outreach to someone on that side of the house? So yeah, um, I was actually going to uh, to use their, they, they had like a, a meeting, um, a, a workshop meeting. I was going to use that, but that was scheduled on a Saturday, um, I think two weeks ago. So yeah, I missed that. And I haven't heard back from Clément um, yet again. So I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll ping him again and try to set something up um, with him. And yeah, there's also one email uh, where I think the operator hub folks we're going to uh, teach how to use um, their technology. So I'm, I'm not sure. There's a few things there, and we still have to find a yeah a date for that. Uh, um, yeah, I, I went to the meeting. Uh, I'm actually the only uh, I think person from here that did go. Uh, it was like two hours. Uh, quite friendly. Uh, I think they would be overjoyed to have more people doing things, uh, and they didn't seem to matter opinionated people as well. Uh, the, uh, uh, I, I took uh, the uh, MariaDB uh, and uh, you know, updated it to, to run with uh, Fedora 32 uh, as, as the base, and that seems to be working, although I haven't yet figured out how to run their tests or really you know where to put it when I'm finished with it. Uh, you know, a, a lot of the processes uh, aren't totally clear to me. Uh, but th they released some uh, some minutes out of that, um, which uh, was attached to the uh, open issue that uh, everybody saw. And I, I didn't hear anything specific about a future meeting. How many, uh, How well attended was the meeting? Uh, there were four people, including me. Okay. Yeah, that, that, I think that's probably. The yeah, I'll, I'll definitely try to schedule it uh, under the week on a on a work day next time. Yeah. Um, Not too early. Yeah, that was uh, kind specific of specific time. I mean, I don't particularly mind Saturday things if I, you know, if I know uh, early enough that I'm supposed to. Uh, I didn't know it had happened until after it did. So that's why I wasn't there, at least. Is there a Fedora calendar for the meeting? Uh, they didn't put one up. So, like, I, that's how I didn't know. Usually, uh, those things show up on the calendar, and I wind up getting subscribed to them, and then I find out. But that's not what happened this time. I think it was just kind of thrown together, and then just everyone I, I did the little chart thingy saying what slots are good for me, and then I don't think I ever heard from anybody about what time they picked. And then I find out like the next day that hey, this thing happened. I'm like what? And so that's that's kind of how that happened for me. Okay. So um, maybe um, also think about inviting Clement to this meeting next time in two weeks' time when you're talking to him, Christian, and then he can maybe pitch a little bit better, a little bit clearer what they need us to do. It sounds like there's some documentation, just like we need documentation for the operators. They need some documentation, like the MariaDB example that Bruce was talking about. It's like, what do you do with it once you've built it? Um, and how do you get it? You know, where do they want it put? All that kind of stuff. So that would be helpful. All right, um, I'm trying to think. Uh, we are already past the road to beyond. We're beyond the road here. Um, 
I haven't heard much more about um, OKD for IoT, and um, it's sort of been suggested that that's probably not where um, we have resources to work on it. So unless there's a big community push for it, I think that's um, kind of an on-hold topic for now. Um, I'll reach back out to Maya and see where she's at, and to um, Peter Robinson, um, who I owe a bo bottle of maple syrup in exchange for some headache pills from the UK. Um, so he, we've been going back and forth with illegal trade between Canada and the UK during COVID. So I'll, I'll reach out and see if I can get them at least connected and see what their update is and make sure that, that Maya's got what she needs. But I think the K3S stuff that's going on in the CNCF is probably going to cover off um, what people need in that scenario. I don't know, um, Neil, uh, if you have any insights into the, if there's any work going on to merge um, Fedora for IoT and Fedora CoreOS or any progress? Oh, or any I believe what's going on right now is that Fedora IoT is using the same kind of pipeline and setup that Fedora CoreOS does, but it is being managed um, somewhat independently um, because uh, uh, there that's is not, not correct actually. No, it's a it's a totally different pipeline, a totally different build system, um, and actually they're Fedora IoT code. is. They're using they're, they're using what? I don't they're think using... so. I'm pretty sure they're using Cosa to actually produce their image. The only difference between okay. IoT and Core CoreOS is the package set and the fact that they support Anaconda to install onto a system. They they use um, something called OS Build to create their artifacts. Oh my god! At least they're they're moving towards that, and. Um, yeah, behind the scenes, there is some some discussion right now how we can move COSA and OS build closer together, but it's not anything we can do in the short term. So, um, yeah, the build system is different, which is why that is difficult to manage. And OS build, unfortunately, doesn't really support um, anything. The, the atomic manifests we've been using so far to uh, declare our package sets and everything. So that's kind of how is anybody a, getting coast how is anybody getting OS build to work inside of the Fedora pipeline? Because it barely all right, you know, clearly nobody wants to tell me anything when I'm working on all these image build tools inside of Fedora. Great. Um so that makes number eight for Fedora image build tools in production. Yeah, well, hey, what's another one? Right. Make it an even dozen. Uh, there's so many ways to build stuff these days. It's crazy. I know, but it's got to So start. there's definitely some some plans on the OpenShift side to enable users to build their own images on their own clusters. Mm -hmm. um, and we want to kind of, in doing that, we want to bring OS, we want to use OS build for that if we can. Right now, there's just too much of a difference to really get there quickly. But I hope because, yeah, COSA and OS Build, COSA is CoreOS Assembler and OS Build is OS Build. Uh, they do the same things, but COSA is very much um, opinionated for building these CoreOS uh, ignition systems. Um, and for example, the, the big difference between CoreOS and Fedora IoT essentially is that in CoreOS we run uh, on the first boot, we run this um, this init uh, init RD. Uh, so from the RAM disk, we kind of do the the ignition, whatever ignition does to create uh, all the files it needs to do. It does that in the init RAM FS, and then kind of lays that out and boots the the actual first boot, the real first boot, um, then goes into the desired state. Uh, already, while on Fedora CoreOS, we don't have this init RAMFS uh, run. So it actually does the ignition run in the real root on the first boot, um, which is kind of hard to reconcile these two concepts. Um, and Fedora IoT does it, I think, for lack of, uh, of RAM. Um, yeah, so 
it's going to be interesting to see how that goes, but it's it's definitely like on a long term roadmap to to merge these two projects somehow. All right. Well, there. That's a can of worms that I just opened. So thank you. Let me close it. Um, and this experiment topic here, Vadim, um, is this still a valid agenda item, or is this something that we've an experiment you've done and? Closed? Um. Yep. Yeah. Some of those are up for grabs. The most um, easiest to start with would probably be C Groups V2. It needs some messing around with kernel arguments, but in 4.6, we should all have all pieces in place and it should work from after a few modifications. The rest is pretty complex. Okay, so it's. Should I, I guess my question is, um, do you need me to leave it on the agenda and check in with you from time to time, or? Um, we we don't have to have this in the agenda. It's uh, it might later on spawn up something interesting, but we don't have to check in on any of those every single meeting. I'm gonna put it on the experiments list. All right, um, CRC for OKD four. Um, I haven't heard any other other than what we talked about a couple of times in the um, the day long marathon. I'm pretty sure this is still not available. Is that correct? I'm actually going to try this afternoon uh, another build. Um, ironically enough, um, I've got a little bit of of bandwidth, and so I'm I'm gonna I. I Forked a copy of uh, SNC and CRC again, so we'll see what happens. Okay, I will leave it on for another two weeks, and then we will see if you know in time, and if you get it, that would be great. Yeah, if we actually get if it builds an image that I can actually run with the CRC executable, then we'll have to figure out where we can host it so that people can oh. download it and and all of that. I, I I have space on OKD.io, um, and you know maybe we can do that if you that we we have this idea of a thing to download. So where we put it and where we link to, you know, we can we can figure that out next week. But I would happily revive um, a link underneath here um, for for something. Um, so yeah, finding the actual place where we should host it, which could be just in the OKD repo, uh, OKD4 repo, or the GitHub um, OpenShift slash OKD repo. It's about um, the other piece of the puzzle is you may get it running once, but maintaining it over time. Like I know um, from past experience with Minishift, it initially landed on the team that I started out with at Red Hat on the dev evangelist team to maintain our um, Minishift which was a real pain in the um, derriere um, over time. So the, I think the, the thing is, let's get, get it up, put it on there, but we also have to think about who, who's going to maintain it and continue to build it for every release and every you know, iteration. That's, and I think that's where we have to reach out like to Steve Spiker, the PM, and say, hey, can you make this, again, part of your build process so it just happens. Um, so anyways, but that's actually really good news. So thank you for that. I will leave you on the agenda for another week and um, go along here. Um, we'll all... see news. <laughs> it's going yeah. to be an attempt. <laughs> it's okay. Attempts we like. Um, getting all clouds enabled with images. Any progress anyone know about getting Azure's um, Fedora CoreOS images up there? I'm sure that's still just hanging out there like the laundry. That's still nothing. No I think it's still to do, yeah. I, I kind of want images like laundry list, trash bucket, things like that for this agenda. Um, the release timeline right here. Um, the rest of these things I think are mostly yeah, things that documentation pieces, bits and pieces. And I think when we start looking, um, Charo, I'm going to use you 
we start looking at the cook, cookbook and recipes to start seeing everything that we did in that OKD marathon should be documented somewhere or and if we do it as recipes, that's great, um, but also just to review and see if there's ways we can insert it into the documentation. Has anybody been doing any testing on OKD, um, not on IBM Cloud because we can't, but on IBM Z and Power Systems? Is there anyone on the call from IBM? Would that even be possible? Because I don't know if we do we even have builds for those architectures? No, no, we don't. Yeah, so the answer to that would be definitively no. Okay. But no, but so basically the question really is, is there anyone from IBM on this call right now? Um, and we're, we're not going to be getting OKD on IBM Cloud, the managed hosted thing, anytime soon, um, or probably in my lifetime. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll reach out to my contacts. I'm still on my table then. I didn't manage to get anyone to show up. All right, I'm just trying to clean up this list. The last thing on the list, replace ironic stub images with ironic built from RDO. Um, is this old and dead? Because I think we saw an OpenStack deployment work. That was that was actually needed for um, IPI on bare metal. Oh, okay. Was it done? Yeah, that's definitely still an open issue. Okay. Um, hmm. uh, yeah, I tried to find out wh which images uh, we're talking about here, but I'm not I'm not sure. Maybe um, yeah. I'll, Maybe Vadim, we can get uh, together and discuss this sometime soon again, so we can uh, bug the the team with releasing images we can use. Um, I think I tried to bug them in this issue, but yes. we can take care of that. It's relatively easy. We just need a lot of pull requests. There's a lot of names on here, so you know, maybe maybe one of them. Will help us. Uh, could you paste the link to that issue? Oh, it's 197. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't see the issue. Um, awesome. Cool. All right. So I'm going to close this window and go back. So that's that's what I have on the list here, really, um, of things I think that are open. Um, I just would then like to open up the call if other people have issues or things that they've run into or if there's stuff that we should have put on the agenda that I didn't get. Um, where are other people at? Uh, I'm going to go around and I will stop sharing and see some faces. And see the stuff in the notes now. So is there anything else that we should be talking about? Vadim? Jaro, Christian, Neil, Zed, you want to introduce yourself since you're brand new to this group? Uh, I can do. I mean, I, I don't think I really have any qualifications to be here. I joined the Slack recently and got the little notification that this was happening, so I thought I'd come and say hello. Um, but yeah, I'm in the very early stages of learning um, about OKD and and what what better way to learn than just jump in right at the deep end? <laughs> oh. This is the place to be. Yeah. <laughs> cool. cool. Um, are you uh, a Red Hatter learning or are you from external? Oh, no, I'm I'm external. I, I work in online gaming and... All right, games powered by OpenShift somehow. There you go. Um, well, we are considering it, actually. <laughs> uh, that figures, yeah. We'll do it on OKD. You'll get better, faster, newer, fresher, everything. That's how games like to go. Yes. That's right. <laughs> newer features and newer bugs. Gaming. Yeah. yeah. That that brings up another idea. Um, we t we passed on the heels of our um, live stream day day long thing. We chatted a little bit about um, hosting um, an hour, maybe monthly, um, for the OKD working group or maybe, and plus Fedora CoreOS or other people um, on our live streaming um, that's happening. So, um, and so if you guys are familiar with Twitch TV, you old gamers, you, um, that's something, um, that's an opportunity as well. Um, it does take time, um, but I'm happy to, to curate that. And if we set up a schedule 
um, and people wanted to talk about their use cases for OKD or you know some new deployment. I know we still didn't do a, a Google Cloud deployment yet, and I think there were a couple others that we didn't get to, um, like the Alibaba one and a few. So we could we could grab an hour um, on a monthly cadence if people are interested and willing to to present um, what they're doing with OKD. That would be lovely, and it's just basically. Um, it's like a talk show with with live demos. So if you're if you guys are game for that, I can we can use the Fedora calendar and and try and get a slot. Um, I know everybody's pretty busy, and and I keep tapping on Christian and Vadim and Charo and Dusty. So um, I'm going to try not to bug them too much. I think this is something for other people um, who are part of the working group. Um, if you want some airtime for the work that you're doing, um, let me know. And if I think if we can get like a commitment of four or five topics, then I'll go to the live stream calendar and, and steal an hour and start booking it. But um, just ping me if you have a topic that you think, and it's got to fill an hour because um, they don't like to do anything shorter than an hour. So that would be, that's my offer. If you're interested, let me know. Bruce, Maria DB, what you're doing at, um, BCIT, anything like that. So, you know, just your what you're doing at Dato, uh, Neil. What's going on in Fedora that impacts OKD? Any or even the Clement from the Container Group might be a good guest to explain why they why it's important to join that. So there's there's lots of things, and we can combine a couple people to fill an hour if people don't have enough content. But that that's another opportunity to you know up level awareness of. Uh, of OKD out there. Does that sound interesting to anyone? Or is everybody's calendar so booked up that they're just not even thinking about it? It's interesting. Okay, interesting is good. Um, I'll just keep I'll keep reminding people. And um, if you if you ping me, send me an email at dmuller at redhat.com if you have a topic that you think you can you can use that hour for and once I have four or five, um, that's usually enough for me to be willing to bug the live stream calendar folks and get a slot for us. Cool. So, um, are we ending short today? We're, you know, we're almost 20. Well, I've got a little something to, to mention to folks if they're interested. Please do. Go for it. Sure. So, um, I, I Apologize for dropping out for the past couple of weeks, but um, my wife and I moved into a new house and we had our baby a couple of days later. So um, things are, yeah, thank you. Uh, things have been a little bit crazy, but I have been working on basically a series of scripts for uh, vSphere um, UPI that from start to finish get everything configured. So the first script actually downloads um, the FCOS image creates a, an installation folder, um, pulls down the OpenShift installer, uncompresses, gets everything in the, like within this installation folder. Uh, and then there's another script that um, generates uh, the ignition files and then does the modifications uh, on the manifests. Uh, and then I've got another series of scripts which I had posted before, but I've modified that, um, built, used the uh, GoVC to um, bring up the FCOS images in vSphere um, and power them up. And then from there, you can just run the installer. Uh, right now, I'm working on it, um, some health monitors in F5. So for folks that have F5s, they can do health monitoring. It's a recipe for health monitoring. And also, I'm doing a little bit of a write-up on Squid to use for your respective proxies if you don't have access to an F5. So all of this is going to go into a recipe of some kind. Um, if anyone's interested in shipping in, there were a couple other folks that were doing UPI uh, on vSphere. If you're interested, just touch base with me. Um, and my goal is to have something that's as easy as possible to get OKD installed UPI on vSphere with just running a handful of scripts. So let me know if you're interested. So Jamie, what, what can you type your email in the, um, in the chat there just for a sec? And if we have it there, and I think that you know, Charo and I are gonna somehow find some time, um, and 
and start and set up that recipe page and maybe once we set it up the structure we have just figure out a way and, and base give people access to add their recipes to it um, and so you could do that and then people can collaborate with you there that I think there's got to be a simple way of doing this all but yeah that would be great are you probably use pull requests yeah to add recipes yeah, it's, it shouldn't be too hard. Um, Jamie, are you running um, OKD in production at UMich now? Uh, not yet. So I ran into an issue uh, with my F5 that I'm working with. So I was trying to build it the past couple of weeks, hoping to re fix that F5 issue in the next couple of days, and then we will be. So it's going to be used basically as a educational tool for OpenShift for the University of Michigan community. Um, when it's up. So sometime in the next week or two, basically, once all the bugs are out and it's configured and there's some redundancy so that I'm not the only person at the University of Michigan who knows how to build this um, and we get some backup people. So yeah, There's another UMich guy who's a CNCF ambassador. I think, um, I'm trying to think, was that Bob, I think is his first name. Do you know him? Mm -hmm. Let me see. I, don't, I don't know who that would be. Bob? Mm -hmm. well, I'm, I'm gonna but I can look. I can go through who... Uh, yeah. They have, so, yeah. There's another UMish guy that's um, looking it up now. So the ultimate goal is we've got uh, two OpenShift clusters on campus, one being run by my college, College of Language, Science and Arts, and then one at uh, a unit called ITS. Uh, and then the idea is that the OKD is going to be sort of the um, the teaching tool to familiarize folks with Kubernetes and OpenShift, et cetera. Yeah. I put the link to Bobby's um, thing, yeah. Bob Killen. And... Oh, Bob Killen, sure. Okay, awesome, thank you. Yeah, so I I, I was associating his his nickname there. But yeah, he's, he's a good person to sync up with too, um, and it would be lovely to I think between Bob's expertise in understanding and navigating this the CNCF landscape stuff and everything else that's going on, if the two of you wanted to do um, one of those OKD working group things, that would be a, that would be awesome. That would be a, a great example of it. And Neil, I know in your role at Fedora plus Dato and what you're doing, you know, maybe combining that would. I know you like to talk, so. Um, uh, I, I, we could probably get an hour out of you easy. Everybody smiles on the, on the entire thing. Yes, Bob, <laughs> we know that. But so I th think stuff like that would be um, good topics. Um, and especially, we probably should wait until we get um, the recipes up and the videos that I'm still working on up um, and then kick it off there. Because I, I think the, you know, ongoing, the things that we're doing, like getting the operators going um, and getting the cadence of the operators and a, just a part of the flow um, of every release so that uh, for operators and talking about that um, and showing that off would be a good thing to do when that starts, um, like when we, when we finally have a catalog that's full. Um, but, you know, things along that nature um, will help drive people to the working group and the hardest thing for me about OKD is it's um, there's no firewall, there's no lead gen. We don't know who's using OKD really out there in the wild. Um, a few people have turned on um, the telemetry when they've installed it in production. So every once in a while, someone um, shows up on the on the dashboard, and I go, oh, that, "That's a win for me," but not very often. I think there's a couple of AWS folks um, who are running OKD, but they're all anonymous, so I don't know. Um, so if you hear of people using OKD out in the wild, it would be wonderful to get them to share their use cases and talk about it. Um, we have now um, over 2,000 OCP um, companies using OCP out there that um, I, we know about, but we really just don't know. Um, and, and pretty much we're not supposed to know because it's open source. They, people are supposed to get to use it anonymously any way they want. but. Um, it would be really nice to have a few more public references um, and use cases um, and to get them involved um, in sort of end user stuff. So and that would be great. Thanks, Ed. So that's um, our time today. Um, well, 
I'm not trying to fill up time. I can give you guys 10 minutes back if everybody wants their 10 minutes back, unless someone has some awesome demo they want to show me, um, or and everybody else. Otherwise, you get 10 minutes back. And um, I am three videos of the working group meeting behind now, officially. Um, and uh, someday I'm going to outsource all my video editing, but it's not happening yet. So you will see them go up on the OKD playing list eventually. I can usually get about one or two a day done. And now I'm down behind by about 12. So um, we're, we're slowly working through them. The next one up, as I said at the beginning of the meeting, I, I should have Dusty's demo of um, DigitalOcean and is talking about Fedora CoreOS up later today. So look for that, tweet it out, and um, as well, join us for the CNCF um, uh, session tomorrow. It's early my time, 7 a.m. Um, so let me just see if I can find the, or the, the link. I think I put it on my Twitter channel here. Twitter, one of us, one of us will have the link to it, and the Latin America one, and this will have the details somewhere, no, it must be under OpenShift Commons. But it would be lovely if some of you could join and listen in, this is the one. I'll throw the link to this in the chat. Tomorrow morning. And yeah, then that should be loads of fun. I'll stop sharing, throw the link in chat so you have the details. Feel free to retweet that on your social channels and get more people to attend. That'll make the CNCF happy. Um, and maybe they'll give us a, a repeat visit too. So um, we'll see. And um, those are kind of hard to come by um, slots. So that'll be good. Is anybody, um, the Metal uh, th Three Cubed team, if anybody connected with them yet? Metal Three Cube, anyways, the bare metal deployment stuff, not yet. Blank looks, all right. I'll go grab some, one of them and make them come next year. Next time. Yeah, that's actually wh where I started playing with it, um, but ran into that roadblock with the ironic images, and that's when I switched my bare metal to UPI. Yeah, so um, the Metal 3 folks are uh, trying to submit to the CNCF, um, and so, uh, yeah, maybe if we can grab one of them, we can get that ironic thing figured out um, and do something jointly, OKD and Metal 3. And then you can lead that with your heavy metal band and your guitars there. Okay, so that was the other thing. So I'll reach out to them. Um, they reached out to me, so um, I'll, I'll make them owe me something. Um, it could be those ironic images. So we'll see what we can do. We need a webinar. Your tweet link. Who's asking? The tweet you linked requires recreating account. Apparently. <laughs> Yeah, you do have to register for a CNCF webinar. I, you know, for an open source foundation, they still have this fetish for lead generation and tracking people. And I did say that on recording. Um, it, it just boggles my mind, but um, yeah. Uh, shakes, shakes her head and goes, hmm. Um, yeah, there's not that's, much. That's CNCF for you. They, they want to know who you are so they can love you. Um, mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that's, that's, uh, yeah, that's another story. And I don't want to go ranting on that um, today. So another day, Neil, you and I can chat about that. And, um, we love the CNCF here. Uh, we, mm -hmm. we, we do. We seem to throw, throw a lot of the, I mean, we, they're, they're really huge positives for having CNCF. And having that umbrella organization and 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 keeping things connected, but there are also it's I I hesitate to say I don't think it's the CNCF's problem. I think it's a Linux Foundation um, uh, process yeah. procedures problem on the way they think about community. And I'll leave it at that. Yeah, so, I have I have personally much to say about that if I ever had the if I ever anyone ever wanted to know. 
yeah, someday I'll have a podcast where I can talk openly about these things. Um, till then, not. All right, guys, I'm going to let you all go. I'm going to go get the dentist to drill my face off with a crash. <laughs> So if you talk to me tomorrow and I'm grumpy, just bear with me. That yeah, should be fine. All right. Take care, all. And um, congratulations on um, the new baby there, Jamie. And, um, yeah, well, well, well done. A new GA release. <laughs> That's great. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.